Yeah, very funny. Thanking you. Here we are, then. Rick Spleen. Yeah. Bob Fairchild. Yeah. It's funny sharing a room with you. I used to watch your TV show every Friday when I got in from school. Double trouble. <laughs> you and 20 million others, eh, son? I still get it all the time, walking down the street, people shouting out, Thanking you! Thanking you! Thanking you! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you still see Stan here? Stan Reed? Yeah. Not spoken to him since 1979. Really? You just split up and that was it? Oh, yes. Oh. Not my idea. No. Why ruin something if it's still working? But Stan had other ideas. So it was bye-bye, highly successful double act. Bye-bye, long-running TV series. Thank you, Stan. <laughs> still, we mustn't get bitter. Just because things haven't worked out for the likes of us. Well, I'm... Doing okay, actually. Got well, yeah, we're getting by, aren't we? But let's face it, this is hardly what we dreamed of, is it, eh? Well, this isn't all I do. I... It's not exactly the Palladium, is it? No, I actually do quite a lot of other. Did they cancel that TV show of yours? No, they After three of... episodes, wasn't it? Four, actually. No, I think just everyone involved decided it was time to move on. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, that one. Time to move on. It's a crack of that. Time to move on to doing gigs like this for pissed up businessmen. <sighs> do you want a coffee or? Yeah, very nice. Decaffeinated. I like caffeine, but it doesn't like me. Really? I get hot and shaky. I'm allergic, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's face it, son. That last TV series you did was a load of crap, wasn't it, eh? It stunk the place out, didn't it? So what is it you're doing now, anyway? Oh, you know, I've got other TV projects. And... Oh, like panel mm. games? Yeah, They're going well. Yeah, I've seen them. They all line them up and guess which one was the drummer out of Freddy and the Dreamers. Hilarious. Well, actually, I think some of them are quite funny, you know? Yeah, split me ribs with it. Alternative. I'm not really alternative. I'm, no, you know, no. I tell jokes really... Alternative, because yeah. every other joke's funny. Little footy. Oh, God. So you're on first, eh? Yeah, I actually asked to go on first, because I've got to get back Don't to London. Don't you worry. You warm them up for me. Uncle Bob will look after them for you. Now, who's going to get some biscuits, eh? Storage boxes I ordered. What are they for? Oh, well, you know, storing stuff. What stuff? I don't know, general stuff, stuff you don't need but don't want to throw away. It'll create space. Yeah, well, don't get them all out here. Well, I'm looking for the shoe organizer. It's supposed to come with a free shoe organizer. Won't be in that one. So it should have come with them, you know. It's free. It should have come with them. I hate that. It just hasn't turned up. Maybe it's a separate delivery. Nah, no, their attitude is, you know, if you're watching the Bargain Channel and you've ordered something, you're obviously some kind of idiot, so why send the stuff anyway? Mm. It's just so annoying. Why don't they just stick to their side of the deal? They'll send you what you ask for. What is a shoe organiser? You see, I know just by the way you said that, you are slightly taking the piss. No, I'm asking so I'll know when it arrives. All right, well, it's a kind of plastic thing with pockets that you put in a wardrobe. I know you're laughing. Just don't come anywhere near it with your shoes when it does arrive. I think it's a great idea. I know you're laughing. Well, it does sound a bit like one of those things you do to distract yourself from working. No, it's one of those things you do to organise your shoes. Come on, what have you got on? I bet there's a show you're meant to be writing. Well, I'm doing Bullet in the News. It's that Channel 5 thing. You said that was rubbish. Like a poor man's version No, no, it's of... much better these days. Much better. Oh, well, good. Just don't waste your entire day on the phone trying to track down your shoe organiser. Oh, no, I won't. I'll just get Magda to do it. What I will do? Oh, Magda, I was wondering if you could phone the Bargain Channel for me. Bargain Channel on television? Yeah. This is some sort of joke, I think. You are being clown. Comedian? No, it's not a joke. Well, I've seen this channel, so I know it's for stupid people. If I no, call I it, then I'm stupid it that. too. It's... This is funny for you. Magda, what am I going to do with a thing like that? To be clown. Comedian. Well, good luck with your work. Bye, Magda. Thing is, Magda, I didn't want to say in front of Mel because she's embarrassed. She's ordered this shoe thing and it hasn't turned up, so could you ring up the channel for me? Of course. Oh, she, she's, she's probably ordered it in my name. Bullet in the news. How come you're doing this? 
That's good exposure. Oh, I thought you said it was Channel 5. So, what do we got? That Scottish guy is still hosting that, isn't he? No, oh, incredibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, you like him? The only person from Scotland ever to have no sense of humor at all, and they give him a comedy show to host. I thought he was your favorite. I can't stand him. He stinks of hairspray. Here, here, you see this? I got you the story. What's this? There's this cat that's inherited a house from its owner. <laughs> I didn't see that. What he doesn't know is... <laughs> Look at his face. The parrot is contesting the will. He's <laughs> inherited. What does he do if he wants to redecorate? OK, there'll be some changes around here. <laughs> yeah, number one, cat flap in every door. Oh, something nice to wipe my ass on. Like the breadboard. <laughs> you see cats doing that? Like, oh. What does the cat do if he wants to up and sell? He's got to show people around. This is where I keep my fur balls. This is my bedroom. Ensuite litter tray. Is it a muse house? <laughs> Get out of here with your puns. Come on, the no, no. show is built on puns. You can't do puns. The title is a pun. Are you going to sink to their level then? Shh. Just because they're all jerks, are you going to no. be one too? Shut up, shut up. Who was he? Bob Fairchild. I was working with him last night. He was fine. He was showing no signs of being dead? I can't believe that. He's a... Look it up, would you? Look it up. Maybe it was a ghost. No, oh, seriously, that's so weird. You know, we were just chatting away. He was fine. Here it is. Children's favorite Bob Fairchild, one half of 70s BBC show Double Trouble, collapsed and died suddenly at his home in Escher. Escher? Escher, yesterday. Is it Escher? Just hours after appearing on stage at the Blandfield Hotel in Swindon. I can't believe that. That's the, I, I'm genuinely shocked, you know. I'm, I'm, God, I'm actually quite upset, you know. That's... Oh. Does it mention me at all? The... No. No, I don't think so. A uh, quote from his one-time double act partner, Stan Reed, speaking from his home in the Bahamas, I am devastated. He was a dear friend. We remained very close throughout the years. Dear, dear friend. Th 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 that's bollocks, you know? They hated each other's guts. <laughs> Seven Springs in 79. Is that right? Bob told me they hated each other's guts. You know, I was a closer friend than he was. You're right, Rick. You and Bob, you were like that. They're just trying to airbrush you out like you're some kind of footnote. I'm just saying I was the last person to work with him, you know? We, we chatted. It was, I, you know, a lot. I made him coffee and... Then, Mr. Scoop, save it for your next talk show. So, Rick, tell us, how did Bob like to take his coffee? Yeah, yeah. Did he take it with milk? Yeah, he took milk and sugar, and, you know... What a wonderful story. And decaffeinated. Join us after the break, when we'll be talking Bob about Bob's biscuits. He's allergic to coffee. See, he couldn't... it's the little details like that that make an anecdote. Does it say how he died? <laughs> You don't know if you gave him the decaf or the real coffee. I can't be sure, you know. I wasn't concentrating. There could have been a mix-up. He might have got the wrong coffee. You know, I don't take these things seriously. You know how I feel about allergies. It's just people's gimmick. It's their way of attracting attention to themselves. Oh, look at me. I'm allergic. I'm special. I'm different. It's, it's nothing. It's like being left-handed. Dozens of people die every year from their peanut gimmick. I'm not saying I did it deliberately. I just don't know. Oh, OK. So you gave him real straight coffee. He's only allergic. It won't matter. The piss about Marcy's is serious. You know, I might have killed one of Britain's best-loved entertainers. Do you think you could actually be that allergic to coffee? I'll tell you what I do think. If it was that coffee, at least he went out on a high. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Magda. Hey. One hour I'm on telephone to these people. Who are you calling? Bargain Channel. Who knows? Maybe it's shoe organizer, who now? Shoe organizer? Mel ordered a shoe organizer from Bargain Channel. <laughs> Just organize our shoes. <laughs> Women for you. <laughs> Women. Hey, Rick. Hmm? What if it's the cops? The cops. Tess come back from the lab. Turns out he's shot full of caffeine. He knew he was allergic. Everybody knew. What kind of maniac would give him real coffee? Who was the last person to see him alive? Yeah, No, I'm just saying. They might be making inquiries. They might be coming here trying to trick you. Ask you to make them some coffee and see if you pay attention no, to how they take it. shut up. He's not going to be the cops. Ben! Oh, Christ. How's college? Yeah, yeah. A-level's going well? Pretty dull. How's the Saturday job? Oh, it didn't work out, you know. No? Uh, it, was, uh, it was just shelf stacking, really, but they wanted me to be in, like, you know, before the shops open and oh, that. Oh, bastards. It's not my style, you know. 
and they weren't going to give on the hour. Some people, you know, they offer you a job, next thing you know, they expect you to turn up when it suits them. Yeah, so I, I just told them to stick it. Well done. Something else will come along. Yeah, well, it already has. I got on this course. Hmm. And uh, I'm pretty lucky because, you know, they give you full training right from scratch, so... Oh, good for you. Yeah. Hiya. Hey. Oh, hey, uh, how'd it go? Did you get a place? I did, yeah. I'll start tomorrow. Oh, wow, great. It's brilliant. Dad, uh, Ben got a place in this course. Just heard. Yeah, yeah, circus skills. Circus skills? Yeah. Yeah, I always... Always had a thing for the circus. When I was a child, we had circus come to town. I am really excited. I laugh so much till I have pain in here, but now I think that the bear did not want to rule the skate. Oh, yeah, well, no, there's no animals, definitely not. No, yes. That would be so wrong. Well, I don't know. There's quite a lot to be said for watching a lion being prodded with a chair. <laughs> it's just juggling and stuff. Sounds great. Who knows, within five years, you could be busking for a living. Hopefully, yeah. What's a joke about the lion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cruel. So, did you get much done today? Are you ready for Bullet in the News? Yeah, yeah. I found quite a good story in the newspaper about this cat who's inherited a house. <laughs> Parrots contesting the will, and uh, cats can do some alterations, put in an ensuite litter tray. <laughs> Still, it's better than the stuff Marty was coming up with. It was all puns, you know. Is it a muse house? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Marty who came up. It could have been me. I think it was, yeah, me. That doesn't matter. <sighs> now, to be honest, I was a bit. Um, a bit distracted. Yeah? I was uh, a bit worried about this Bob Fairchild thing. Oh, don't you start. I've had it all day. Yeah? Yeah, well, you know, I look after his daughter, Fiona Fairchild. S presented Science Now on Children's yeah. TV. In fact, you've met her. Did I? Yeah, at the Science Museum party. Yes, yeah, of course. Well, how is she? How is she taking it? Really badly. She was hysterical on the phone. Then she came to the office crying her eyes out. Why? Well, not, not why. How did he die? He just dropped down dead. <sighs> that's, that's bad luck. She's in shock. Can't believe it's happened. Yeah. These things happen. Sometimes people die. No reason. You know, she should know that as a scientist. Well, she's not really a scientist. She's the presenter. Still, you'd think some of it would rub off. Anyway, what was bothering you about Bob Fairchild? No, I was just wondering if you knew, you know, how old he was. Sixty. Sixty, was he? <gasps> wow. That'll be it then, won't it? <sighs> oh, Sixty? <gasps> That's going at some, isn't it? Oh. I've read all the papers, I've listened to the news. There's nothing in here about cause of death, just more tributes. People banging on about how much you've been missed. Rick, the way I see it is this. Best thing is... Hand yourself in. Get yourself a lawyer. Make a statement. It was me. Save the family the time and effort and heartache of not knowing who killed him. Oh, shut up. Oh, you're no murderer, Rick. You're just did a crazy, crazy thing, and now a man is dead. You know what? You're enjoying this, aren't you? No, I'm trying to say that. I'm trying to give you hope. Good lawyer, sympathetic judge, you know, maybe one with an axe to grind. A judge who was abused by a children's entertainer when he was a kid. You're looking at two, four years max. You know what? Get away from you. It'll be worth it. Well, look at this headline, thanking you. Imagine being remembered for saying that. So what do you want to do? You want to worry about him all day, or do you want to write some gags for the show? Oh, God, who cares about that? Stupid bloody Channel 5 show. I wish I'd never said I'd do it, uh, you know? Who the hell watches television on a Saturday night? People with no friends and no life. Welcome, gentlemen. I trust I find you well this glorious day. Can I interest you in our special of the day today, which is lentil and mushroom risotto? Um, I'll tell you what. I'll just get you a couple of coffees and you can make up your mind. Great. What the hell's gotten into him? It's weird, and there's no use in it. No, it's like he finally lost his virginity it's or like something. He got his medication right or something. Nope. Lost. I, uh, 
I couldn't help noticing that you're appearing in a bullet in the news this uh, week. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording it tomorrow. All oh, right. Yeah, I never miss it. Really? I wouldn't have had you down as a... Every Saturday night. Yeah. That host is a very witty guy. Cool. Yeah, it's oh. all written for him. It's just on auto cue. He's so, so quick. He's just reading it. How he comes up with some of that stuff, I'll he, never He doesn't. Know. The panellists, they come up with yeah, their jokes. Panellists, they're very witty people, yeah. Mm, yeah. I had a joke you might want to use. Please? Yeah. Um, I read about a cat that's inherited a house from its owner. Which struck me as rather absurd, so you could certainly mention that. <laughs> Thank you. Rick, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? Mm. I mean, you know, feel, feel free to use it. I'll tell you what, one other thing while we're at it. Mm -hmm. um, that title, The Bullet in the News, never liked that. So, uh, you know, it's just not very good, so maybe you could mention that to the powers that be. Um, yeah? Oh, I, I will. <sighs> That's great. What, what, what? Can't do the cat stuff You now. can do the cat stuff. I'll be sitting at home saying he wrote it. Just because he read a story that's been in all the papers. Prick. Hey, you still do the stuff about the cat showing people around the no, house. No, that's you where you're wrong. I kind of mention the cat material. You know, every time I come in here, he'll be waltzing around telling everyone he gives me ideas for my material. Yeah, it's a professional thing. I take a lot of pride in not doing other people's material. Oh, of course you do. One, uh, one other thought I had about this. Actually, show. you know what? I got it pretty much covered, thanks. Uh, anyway. About the Russian guy? Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stole that snow plan. Yeah, no, I read all about that. And I wrote a really good joke for it, thanks. Right, OK. I didn't hear about this Russian guy. What about the Russian guy? Right. Gives a shit. Yes, yes, yes. Shoe organizer. No, no boxes came. Uh, no, not no boxes. No, no, not no boxes well, came. Boxes came, but there was no shoe organizer. Now he's very upset. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes. Postcode yeah, is M. Sorry about her. Sorry. Hi. Yeah. No. What it what it is is um, I ordered uh, this set of storage boxes. No. I, I, I'm sorry. I haven't got the product number. Well, you, well, you must know. I mean, just, well, how many different types of storage box do you sell? <laughs> really? That's, that's quite a lot. No, you did send them. They're they're in my kitchen. Can I just give you my address and then not do that thing where I give you the postcode and you work out the address from that? I, you know, they're just I don't know. It's like a party trick or something. I'm just not in the mood for it. You know? I'm not being aggressive. OK, I apologise. If that, if that sounded aggressive... Yeah, I know you sent the boxes. No, it's the free shoe organiser that I'm after. <sighs> oh, music now. I've got music. Did you have the music? Yes. Arctic Monkey. Well, of course I looked in the boxes. That was the first thing I did. I did uh, I'm not raising my voice. Oh, hello? No, it didn't come with the boxes. That's the whole point. Yeah, I'll hold. I'll hold. In what way is that threatening language? Just asking you to send me the free shoe organiser that I ordered with... Hello? That's, they're so rude, aren't they? You know, as soon as he's losing the argument, he hangs up. Did you try again tomorrow? Maybe? Could you? Sad. Nice tributes about Bob Fairchild. Oh, they go on a bit if you ask me. He won't be that missed. Anyone would think bloody Father Christmas had died. Lovely one from Stan Reed. Stan Reed? Bob hated his guts. They hadn't spoken since 1979. Really? Is that what he said? It's practically the first thing he said to me. And the last, as it turned out. How's. you know, the daughter? Fiona? Mm. Worse. Really? She's in a state, poor thing. She's convinced there's something suspicious about it, wants to push for an inquest. Oh, God, there's no need for that. Everyone knows he was old. Can't they spare the family the heartache? She is the family. Well, she should spare herself the heartache. She wants to get the police in. I feel so sorry for her, poor thing. Are you OK? Me? God, no, fine, yeah, yeah. What's the matter? You know, usual worries. Probably a bit nervous about doing bullet in the news. No, you're not. Come on. I'm a bit worried. <clears throat> I mean, this is going to sound silly. Just, I think, think I might have 
inadvertently killed Bob Fairchild. Killed him? I, I'm sure I'm worrying about nothing. Well, he definitely is dead. Seriously. Bob was really allergic to caffeine, and I made him a coffee backstage. And I don't know, but I might have, by accident, I might have just g given him real coffee. That wouldn't kill him. No, I've looked it up on the internet. You can die from as little as 3.2 grams of caffeine. How many cups is that? 80. How many did you give him? One, but the point is, he was really allergic. If you're allergic, it would take less. <sighs> Look, don't be ridiculous. I'm sure it's got nothing to do with it. I mean, if it was peanuts, yes, but I've never heard of anyone dying of a coffee allergy. Really? Yes. I mean, it's probably best not to mention it to anyone else, for the time being, at least. <laughs> My shoe organiser. Mel's. She ordered it. Yeah, well, it was more of a joint decision to get one. Still, at least it's arrived. No. I decide not to phone. Instead, I go out and I find this in Oxfam shop one pound, so I buy much cheaper than phone calls. Yeah, but the thing is, the one I ordered should have arrived. Yes, but I buy you this one. Well, it's very kind of you, Magda, but the fact is I was promised a free shoe organiser and that's what I want. These people can't go around promising free shoe organisers all over the place and then just not deliver. That's the trouble with this country. The whole service industry's gone to pot. I don't know what it's like in your country. We don't have shoe organiser in my country. It's not really what I meant. It's a matter of principle. You can't oh, just... Might be shoe organiser. You got the receipt for this one? Uh, I think Oxfam do receipts. Sam! Ben is here! Hi, Ben. Hey, Rick. Shoe organiser. I ordered one, but it didn't arrive. Bank just going to got one from Oxfam. It's not really what I wanted, but anyway. Yeah. My mum's got a shoe organiser. Yeah. So the circus thing, how's that going? Circus skills, yeah. Uh, no, no, not good. Not good. No. Gave him my best shot, but... Oh, sorry to hear that. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, Dad. Hey. Ben's just telling me the circus thing didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, bloke running it, bit of an attitude problem with Ben. With Ben? Why? Mm. It was fine before lunch. And, you know, then after lunch he kept going on about all, you know, how to do things oh. the right way and... The teachers make you sick, don't they? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? You know, I just want to improvise and free flow and, you know, the textbook stuff's just not my style. Nah, not at all. Yeah, like, I kept going on and on and on about, like, safety stuff, fire-eating and tents and that. Petty. Yeah. So anyway, I just walked. Good decision. Cheers. So you guys off to college now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cos I'm gonna go meet Marty at the cafe, and if you wanna come with me, it's on the way. Uh, yeah, all right. OK. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be ready in a couple of minutes. It's a nice day for a walk, so... Oh, right. Uh, you're not taking the car, then? No? No, I usually just walk to the cafe. Oh, right. Uh, well, we're not really ready to go right now, so if it's OK, maybe we'll go a bit later. Yeah, I need to yeah. grab some books and... That's nah, it's fine. <clears throat> just... just a thought. Doesn't matter. Wants the police to investigate. She's pushing for an inquest. Rick, if I die, save the coroner's time. It was boredom. No, yeah, yeah. Come on, we gotta get through these gags for the show. You know that shoe organizer? This still hasn't arrived. You don't say. Magda went off to Oxford and bought a second hand one. Second hand <laughs> shoe organizer. Second hand. 
Well, that's all you need, the smell of dead men's shoes in your closet. So, tonight's the night. Do you get nervous before these recordings? Well, you know, I've done quite a lot of these in the past, so... Oh, of course, yeah. Um, do you think uh, you might be using my cat story? Your cat story? Yes, the one I spotted. Well, you know, it's very much spur of the moment, these things. I generally just improvise. Only I mentioned it to a few people. Well, I wouldn't get their hopes up too much. I think Father was quietly impressed with my new career as a TV writer. Proud <laughs> moment for any dad, finding out his son writes for Rick's Blaine, let me tell you. <laughs> Quite. Although, to be frank, he hadn't heard of you. Still, I'll leave you to your musings. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Let's get on with this. All right. What did you say it needed? It just feels too written, you know? Oh, okay. So you want it to sound more improvised? Yes. <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Are you saying a cat has inherited a house? I didn't see that story. What, what's going to happen? Has the parrot not contested the will? <laughs> so is the cat going to redecorate? Okay, give me some changes around here. Number one, I want a cat flap in every door. <laughs> Number two, I want something nice to wipe my ass on, like a breadboard. <laughs> What's gonna happen when the cat wants to sell up and move? Is he just gonna, is he gonna show people around? This is where I keep my fur balls. <laughs> Bedroom, ensuite letter tray. <laughs> I didn't read the story. What, what paper was that in? You were great. Yeah, I know. They just couldn't get enough of it, could they? Yeah, the cat stuff, man, it just killed. It killed. I know. <laughs> just wish I didn't have this vision in my mind of Michael sitting at home with his dad going, you know, I found that. Story for Rick? <laughs> forget it, forget it. Just don't like other people taking the credit for my gang. You gotta let it go, Rick. Mm. What I borrowed from hospitality. Ah, uh, nice one. Eh? Yeah, and this. I don't want to read this. Uh, no, hang on to it. We'll use it next time, maybe, yeah? Just read this. Cut, Marty, I've been reading the papers all day. Yeah, but you haven't seen this. This is the evening paper. It's hot off the press. Marty, this is Fiona. I've seen your TV show. It's very good. And informative. Sorry about your dad. <laughs> the shoe organizer arrived. I ordered a shoe organizer. It was meant to come free with some stuff, and it didn't come. And now, now it's here. <laughs> yeah, you got one of these? Yeah. <laughs> it's because Magda went off to Oxfam and got me a second hand one, but I didn't want that. Just smelt of dead men's shoes. 